Hi, this is Robin Sampson with HeartOfWisdom.com and BibleJournalLove.com. And today we're going to make a Bible journal page using art journaling methods. I have placed a art journaling kit into the 12 Bible Errors class. We're using the Abraham kit from the 12 Bible Errors class. We're going to use the watercolor papers from the 12 Bible Error class. So first we'll start by going to File, New, Blank File, and we're going to make this page 300 dots per inch, 6 inches wide, and 7.5 and inches high. You can make it whatever size you want. I'm making it for the Illustrated Faith Praise Journal. First we're going to the brushes that I put in your kit, and we're going to grab one and open it in Photoshop Elements because I'm going to show you how you're going to take this brush and save it, this little ping file, and save it by defining brush. And let's go get one more. Define brush. And now when you go to the brush panel, you're going to see the brushes there. Those are the two brushes that we just did. So I can close these out. Now we're on our page. Now whenever you use a brush, it's very important that you make a new layer. I want to tweak this brush because I don't want to use it like this. If I was to use it like this now, this is what it would look like. And that's not what I want. So let me get rid of that layer and I'll make another layer. We're going to size it a little bit bigger and then we're going to brush settings and what we want to do is space it and make sure keep going until you see space in between this little image right here. Okay and you can also turn it like this. So that's good for now. And then I'm going to press the letter D on my keyboard to make my colors black and white. You can barely see them, but they're right there. I had to make my page smaller so you could see this. To reduce my brush down, I'm just going to use my left bracket. You can also size it here. And I'm just going to cover this with a lot of um, brushes. Then I'm going to twist it around a little bit. And it looks really funky now, but it it's going to look neat when we're done. So now let's add another layer and do some more brushes. Maybe twist it a little bit more and a little bit smaller and cover up some of those more of the white areas, but not all of them. And it's just playing. And now let's make one more layer. And some can overlap. Okay, now we're going to bring in watercolor papers to attach to each one of these layers. And on the bottom, I'm going to start with a newspaper print that I have put in your art journaling. So go to File, Place, and scroll to the page you have the art journaling kit and find the newspaper. Hold the, the bounding, pull the bounding box to cover the whole page while you hold the shift key. Now clip this mask. There you have some papers on the background. And if you have too many or not enough, I'll show you how to fix that. Now let's put a different paper place. And we can use this paper. Again, pull it so it covers the whole page. Create clipping mask. And now the final. And you can do more layers than I've done here. And you can do different kinds of brushes. Let's go to the 
watercolor paper from the kit and use, let's try this one. And what I'm doing is making a, a quick way for you to make it look like you've done a lot of work here and you just put all these layers together one at a time. Now I, I decided I want another paper on the very background, so let's place one. go in the background. Now, and when you see this line, that means that you have to click enter or it's, you're not going to be able to work with it. That's a little bit too much on the, on the newspaper, so you go to, to the clipping mask, the brush layer underneath the newspaper, and then go to your eraser tool and use the same brush again. you can get rid of some of that. So we'll erase it and it's showing underneath because it's really too much newspaper. You see what we're doing? And one of these is shifted. I think it's this one. Yeah. And maybe you want a little bit more of this blue, so we'll go to this layer and go back to brush and add the brush on this layer. And now we're getting something that looks kind of neat. So what I like to do at this point is take all these layers and group them just so it's nice and neat. But now I want to get another paper to blend over all of these layers. Let's try this. And I usually use overlay. That looks okay. Let's look at some of the graphics that we have in the background available with Photoshop Elements. Because you'd be real surprised what you can do with some of these papers. I'm going to put this brown one on here. Oh, I, I forget. It always comes in as a background. So you have to remove this little box and then tell it to go to the top. Now let's do soft light. And let's do overlay. I'm not real thrilled with that one. Let's get rid of that. You just keep playing. Let's see what this one does. Remember that's a background, so it comes in on the background. And then we have to move it up to the top. Okay. So you can see, you can spend the whole day doing this and playing with the different backgrounds. I'm going to get another watercolor paper this is one of my favorites to use for an overlay to the on the top because of these edges so I keep turning these off and on to see which ones I like the best Okay, 
I really like this. I feel like I'm getting somewhere now. So again, I'm going to grab all of these papers and group them just to know that that's my background and I'm going to name it background. Now, if you don't like your look, keep playing with it. Play with all the blending modes because now I've gotten to something I really like and I'm going to leave it there except for, I think this should be a little bit wider. Something's, I think it's this layer. It's not all the way. There we go. I didn't like that white. And I really like this. Then if you go to the graphics under, I think it's graphics, there's an outline. We usually call it a, an overlay. Yeah, there's this, this is one of them. There was another one, I think, similar that look, gives it more like an inked back of inked on the edges. And you have to pull that out to fit. And what we'll do here, go back to layers, is try color burn. And that looks neat. I really like this look. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is how to do, there's a font called Blackout Midnight, and I'm going to write the word Abraham, and that's Midnight, Blackout Midnight, and this is a free one, I'm using the link for you. I'm going to make it white, Let me grab my white text. And let's zoom in so you can see you can see a little bit of the newspaper back there. And we want this to look like a stamp, like you stamped it a couple times and you didn't get it real good either, the outline stamp. So the first thing we're going to go to is styles and then you go through this little list until you find visibility and you're going to click on this one, which is no visibility. And the reason we're doing that is because we're also going to add a stroke. Once, let's try this one here for now, but now I'm going to go back to layers because I don't like that stroke and I'm going to make another kind of a stroke. Um, I like the seven, maybe six, as a size. And I'm going to make this a light gray. Maybe more of a whitish, yeah. And now we're going to duplicate this text layer, and the way we do that is hit Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. And now let's twist this a little. I go, go up to the bounding box, then go outside of the bounding box, and when you get these little arrows, you can twist this. Even pull it out just a little. So it looks like a mistake. And then let's do it again, Command J or Control J. And go twist this one this way. And really look like you kind of made an accident there. And then go back to the middle one, uh, I'm sorry, the bottom text layer where you wrote Abraham. And go back to styles because let's see what it looks like if we put a little like white paint on the background. So we made it in white so we can bring the visibility back. So that looks kind of neat too. Okay. And then if we merge those three layers, and then give it a Let's go zoom in and see what this is going to look like. I'm not sure. We might leave it just like this. Well, that isn't going to work. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it just like that. So now we have our stamp. Okay, let's get some pictures in here, some images. Let's go to File, Place, and find our Abraham 
Well, you know what? Let me get the altar, which was in the Noah kit, the flood kit. And this altar has a white sticker look around it, and I don't care for that on this page, although it's not bad. So I'm going to go over to my blend modes and multiply that to give it a more of a see-through look. Now let's get the Abraham and Isaac image from the Abraham kit, the Abraham characters. There's Abraham and Isaac. And I'm going to put them in front of the altar because they're waiting to see what God is going to do. And we're going to have the words here where Abraham's saying, where's the ram? So we have enough room for that here. And then the next image we're going to get is the ram. Okay, and then I played around with, you know, I don't know if you'll like this or not. Feel free to leave anything off or add more to it. We want you to have your own look, not copy me. But go back to the brushes. Let me show you something on these brushes. That, so you can look at by text only, by small thumbnail. And there's what I wanted right there. And here's what I want. So I'm going to change my color to white, and then remember, because it's a brush, we need a new layer, and I'm going to bring this layer all the way to the top, which I hit Command, Shift, right bracket on a Mac, Command, sh Control, Shift, right bracket on a PC. That's a real handy one to do that I don't even think about, that it would be real good for you to, to learn. And to make this brush bigger, I can either go to here and make it size bigger, because it's on its own layer, I can size it size it afterwards too. So I can just plop it right here and then say, wow, that's way too big, and then control T and then bring it down and make it smaller. But when you size your brush, you can do it with the brackets, right and left brackets for larger and smaller, or you could do it with this sizing thing, tool here. But now it's already a layer so we're going to size it like this. And this was just to bring a little attention that the angel's telling him about this ram. So we're getting somewhere now. Let me go to, I know this is in Genesis 22, and you can cut and paste as much of, of this as you want. I like the, um, the line, Father, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? So I'm going to grab that. Well, first, let me go ahead and go through the graphics because I saw a real interesting, here it is. We're going to cut and paste. Where is the lamb? Took a little bit too much. So go back to layers. Click this and let's bring that down. Not that far. Okay, so now I think we, we're going to do a, um, a little bit of a grouping. I want to lock the background, lock Abraham, I'm happy where those are. So I want to select all of those and group them. And call them the text, the Bible verse, the verse, and bring that down a little bit. Bring Abraham down a little. Now we have room for a layer up, a cluster up here. Place. Washi. And 
let's do a style, drop shadow, go back to layers, fix the drop shadow, Okay, I like that, so I'm going to grab this drop shadow and duplicate it by copy layer style and put it on this washi and this washi and paste layer style. Okay, a little strip of, um, there was a wire, I can use this. And let's grab that one. And then let's go to layers and we have this flower and this chicken wire and both of the and the grid all need and I still have that layer style on my clipboard so I'm going to paste those layer styles. Here we go. I'm going to add one more thing. I saw a ring, a brad ring here that I wanted to add as a frame around Abraham and Isaac's face. And I go back to the layers and multiply that. Bring down the opacity. And I'm very happy with this page. So this is it for now. I did want to show you quickly how to save. You go to File. If you're going to save this for the Internet that you want to save in the Facebook group, save for web, that flattens it and takes it from 300 dots per inch down to 72 dots per inch. And I usually make it about 800. Um, you can make it up to 1,000. I wouldn't make it the width any more than 1,000 because there's no reason to do that. Then Save. And I do a Bible journaling digitally. Abraham. And now it's saved. The other way to save it is to save as, or just save while you have all these layers. Then when you save it like that, you're going to save it as a PSD, which that'll save all your layers. And then you can go back and change it out or use this background again or whatever it is you want to do. So I hope that helps you. Let me know if you have any questions in the Facebook group. I check in there every day. And also I'll be on Tuesday night of 7 o'clock Eastern Time. I'll be on Facebook Live. See you there. Bye-bye.